today I will judge nothing that occurs. Today I will judge nothing that occurs. Today I will judge nothing that occurs. What is the world? What is the world? The world is false perception. It has not born of error. The world is false perception. It is born of error. Let us not rest content. Let us not rest content until the world has joined our changed perception. Let us not be satisfied until forgiveness has been made complete. And let us not attempt to change our function. We must save the world. We must save the world. For we who made it must behold it through the eyes of Christ. That what was made to die be restored to everlasting life. For we who made it must behold it through the eyes of Christ. That what was made to die be restored to everlasting life. Today I will judge nothing that occurs. Today I will judge nothing that occurs. Well, thank you all so much for joining me. I'm Willie from the Ozarks and we're ready for lesson 243 and of course the Miracles Workbook for Students and we'll be reading from the text also. And uh, here on uh, August the 31st of 2023, lesson 243 is, Today I will judge nothing that occurs. I will be honest with myself today. I will not think that I already know what must remain beyond my present grasp. I will not think I understand the whole from bits of my perception, which are all that I can see. Today I recognize that this is so, and so I am relieved of judgment, which I cannot make. Thus do I free myself and what I look upon to be in peace as God created us. Today I will judge nothing that occurs. Father, today I leave creation free to be itself. Father, today I leave creation free to be itself. I honor all its parts in which I am included. We are one because each part contains your memory. And truth must shine in all of us as one. Truth must shine in all of us as one. Today I will judge nothing that occurs. And our associated reading a page back is, What is the world? The world is false perception. It is born of error and it has not left its source. It will remain no longer than the thought which gave it birth is cherished. When the thought of separation has been changed to one of true forgiveness, will the world be seen in quite another light, and one which leads to truth, where all the world must disappear and all its errors vanish. Now its source has gone and its effects are gone as well. The world was made as an attack on God. It symbolizes fear. And what is fear except love's absence? Thus the world was meant to be a place where God could enter not, and where his son could be apart from him. Here was perception born, for knowledge could not cause such insane thoughts, but eyes deceive and ears hear falsely. Now mistakes become quite possible, for certainty has gone. The mechanisms of illusion have been born instead, and now they go to find what has been given them to seek. Their aim is to fulfill the purpose which the world was made to witness and make real. 
They see in its solutions but a solid base where truth exists, upheld apart from lies. Yet everything that they report is but illusion, which is kept apart from truth. As sight was made to lead away from truth, it can be redirected. Sounds become the call of God, and all perception can be given a new purpose by the one whom God appointed Savior to the world. Follow his light and see the world as he beholds it. Hear his voice. Hear his voice alone in all that speaks to you. <laughs> hear his voice at Hear his voice alone in all that speaks to you and let him give you peace and certainty which you have thrown away, but heaven has preserved preserved for you in him. Let us not rest content until the world has joined our changed perception. Let us not be satisfied until forgiveness has been made complete. And let us not attempt to change our function. We must save the world. For we who made it must behold it through the eyes of Christ, that what was made to die be restored to everlasting life. Today I will judge nothing that occurs. Let's do our best to just let things be. Let's don't have an opinion about everything today. You don't have to have an opinion. You don't have to be a meaning maker about everything. Let the Holy Spirit give you the meaning that he wants you to have for things. Be willing to be patient on that. Let him show you the miracle, the way to see things. And don't form opinions. That's the way to keep from making judgments. Okay, the principle of salvation is our next section in chapter 25, the remedy. This Roman numeral, uh, what is that? Roman numeral uh, nine. The principle of salvation. Okay, before we read that, let's take a look at what on earth is going on today. Uh, bacon day, and you know, bacon made from pigs. And that's the genus Seuss, or Sus or Seuss, I'm not sure. Uh, Seuss domesticus is your common pig. The wild variety from Europe, they were not native to, uh, you know, they, 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 there weren't any in the Americas until the Europeans came here. Uh, and they brought the, the Seusses with them, <laughs> or the Susses. Uh, and the, the wild variety is a, scof a scrofa. And a, a pig is just a young hog, and a pig and a hog, they're all swine. So just for a little clarity. Eat outside day. <laughs> for you meat eaters, might have you a, a hog. <laughs> I know the, the Hawaiians like to cook those things in a, in, a, in, a, in a pit with coals. Franchise Appreciation Day. International Whiskey Day. And you know whiskey can be made out of corn, rye, barley, or wheat, uh, fermented and distilled. Love Litigating Lawyers Day, National Diatomaceous Earth Day, and we'll talk about diatomaceous earth in just a minute. I've got some right here. Uh, National Matchmaker Day, <laughs> for all you matchmakers, today's a good day to do your work, huh? National Trail Mix Day, uh, I love mixing different nuts and and dried fruits together to make a, a trail mix. Thoughtful Thursday. Well, we want every day to be thoughtful of others. Thoughtful in the sense of, you know, being nice to people, I would think, is what the idea there is. Uh, we love mem Memoirs Day. Okay, and I said we want to talk about diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth is a type of powder made from the sediment of fossilized algae found in bodies of water. They are high in silica and found all over the world. And it's kind of a white powder. And I'm finding all this, this is uh, on WebMD, it goes on and it says, it's used in industry for water filtration, insulation, medicine, cleansers, and insecticide. It kills insects by cutting through the exoskeleton and then dehydrating them, dries them out. So it's real sharp at a microscopic level, a little silica, a little pieces of, basically think of it as glass. Uh, but it's real powdery if, from the sense for feeling. Uh, found this by mouth, uh, it's used to 
reduce cholesterol, treat constipation, and a good for skin, hair, and teeth health. Some side effects are lung problems and cancer from breathing it too much. So be careful not to breathe it. Matter of fact, let's take a look at it real quick. And let me just show you what I do. And I started wearing one of these uh, uh, little bandanas around my neck back during the COVID because I found that they worked so nice for when I was out visiting people and all of a sudden someone showed up and I wanted to have a mask on. Well, I could do that. Anyway, I'd encourage you to put a little mask on. It's really dusty stuff. Uh, real, I, You probably can't tell, but it's like a flower, real fine. But that, you can use that and pour in a little bit on your, your uh, you know, some people eat it for, for their own health and you'll just do your own checking on that. And, you, and they do make a food grade. Um, anyway, let me get this stuff out of here. I was just trying to show you how you can use the, the mask to, um, to do your, you know, be sure to put a dust mask if you're working. I put some on my horse's feed and I'll do it for like two months. Just a little bit of horse on the on the grain when I'm feeding them to worm them. And I've heard that 30 days is enough, but I usually go 60. Um, and just just a little bit in the grain every day. They like and you can do it for your dogs and cats. Look what I found that it um, oh let's see. Um, uh, it's a good dewormer for round worms, uh, whip worms, pen worms, and hook worms. So your dogs and cats, people use it for that. Diatomaceous earth is effective against fleas, mites, lice, ants, millipedes, earwigs, cockroaches, mites, lice, ants. Oh, I just said that. Silverfish, bed bugs, crickets, centipedes, pill bugs, saw bugs, or sow bugs, um, most beetles, fungus gnat larvae, and some grubs. And I found all that on homesteadandchill.com. Uh, and anyway, I think that be sure to use the, the food grade if you're going to use it in your own self. Otherwise, you can buy a 50 pound, 50 pound bag at the feed store around here and uh, it lasts a long time because you don't use very much. I probably for I probably would use a, a, my guess is maybe a, a less about half, probably about a half tablespoon uh, for a horse per day for 60 days and just mix it in with the grain. And if you got several horses, mix the appropriate amount in with it. Here, I got my guitar out. What am I doing? Uh, what else did I want to tell you about that's going on around the world? Uh, I did that. Uh, uh, the York, Black York Sweet Cherry. Black York Sweet Cherry out of Edible Landscaping. Ripens a bit later than Kristen and Sam, an excellent pollinator for other varieties such as Kristen and Ulster. We read about Ulster last time. Blooms with Stella. Sam and Rainier, though Rainier is a few days earlier. Large, large dark fruit on a rugged grower-friendly tree. Very cold hardy and resistant to bacterial canker. Available on dwarf crimped 5 rootstock. Space about 10 foot circles. Good in zones 5 through 7. And it's a prunus avium. And I've got one more the other side in the for you. And I say one more but another. Deborah Martin, it's a 16 minute 40 second video. It's titled Woman Dies from Sickness, Sees the Afterlife, and Signs Contract. <laughs> and she's an intuitive energy healer that uh, works with this. Uh, she's a certified research medium with Windbridge Institute. She had a lot of good things to say, and I'd encourage you listening to her. Uh, okay. Um, now let's go look at our text reading. And uh, we're ready, like I said, we're paragraph 63, the principle of salvation. The Holy Spirit can use all that you give to him for your salvation, but he cannot use what you withhold, for he cannot take it from you without your willingness. Think of the Holy Spirit as a perfect gentleman. The Holy Spirit can use all that you give to him for your salvation. But he cannot use what you withhold, for he cannot take it from you without your willingness. For if he did, you would believe he wrested it from you against your will. And so you would not learn it is your will to be without it. <laughs> you need not give it to him wholly willingly, for if you could, you'd have no need of him. 
But this he needs, that you prefer to take it, that you prefer he take it, than that you keep it for yourself alone and recognize that what brings loss to no one you would not know. This much is necessary to add to the idea no one can lose for you to gain and nothing more. Let's look at that again. There's a little wordy. Uh, the Holy Spirit can use all that you give to him for your salvation, but he cannot use what you withhold, for he cannot take it from you without your willingness. For if he did, you would believe he wrested it from you against your will. And so you would not learn it is your will to be without it. You need not give it to him wholly willingly, for if you could, you'd have no need of him. But this he needs, that you prefer he take it, than that you keep it for yourself alone and recognize that what brings loss to no one you would not know. This much is necessary to add to the idea no one can lose for you to gain and nothing more. Everybody needs to be blessed by every decision we make. That's the way the Holy Spirit works. That's why we want to lean on Him and make no judgments today. Let Him do all the judging that needs judged. Just follow His guidance. Here is the only principle salvation needs, nor is it necessary that your faith in it be strong, unswerving, and without attack from all beliefs opposed to it. You have, not, you have no fixed allegiance. But remember, salvation is not needed by the saved. You are not called upon to do what one divided still against himself would find impossible. Wow, we're going to start doing some miracles, things that in the past we would have thought was impossible. Have little faith that wisdom could be found in such a state of mind. But be you thankful that only little faith is asked of you. What but a little faith remains to those who still believe in sin? What could they know of heaven and the justice of the saved? <laughs> Boy, this sure goes along well with our lesson today. Today I will judge nothing that occurs. There was a time we would have thought, well, that's silly. I'll just walk out in front of a car if I don't watch my surroundings. <laughs> but there is a way to navigate that, that relies on the Holy Spirit more and more and less on your eyes and ears. Paragraph 65, there is a kind of justice in salvation of which the world knows nothing. There is a kind of justice in salvation of which the world knows nothing. To the world, justice and vengeance are the same. For sinners see justice only as their punishment, perhaps sustained by someone else, but not escaped. The laws of sin demand a victim. Who it may be makes little difference. But death must be the cost and must be paid. This is not justice, but insanity. Yet how could justice be defined without insanity, where love means hate and death is seen as victory and triumph over certainty and timelessness and life? 66. You who know not of justice still can ask and learn the answer. Justice looks on all in the same way. Remember, justice is... Is, is, is equal in us, is equality. It looks on, he says, justice looks on all in the same way. It is not just that one should lack for what another has. It is not just that one be prosperous and another be lacking. It is not just that one should lack for what another has. For that is vengeance in whatever form it takes. Justice demands no sacrifice, for any sacrifice is made that sin may be preserved and kept. It is a payment offered for the cost of sin, but not the total cost. The rest is taken from another to be laid beside your little payment to, in quotes, atone for all that you would keep and not give up. So is the victim seen as partly you, with someone else by far the greater part. And in the total cost, the greater his, the less is yours. And justice being blind is satisfied by being paid. It, it matters not by whom. Can this be justice? God knows not of this. But justice does he know and knows it well. For he is wholly fair to everyone. <laughs> 67. 
Vengeance is alien to God's mind because he knows of justice. To be just is to be fair and not be vengeful. Fairness and vengeance are impossible, for each one contradicts the other and denies that it is real. It is impossible for you to share the Holy Spirit's justice with a mind that can conceive of specialness at all. Again on that last, vengeance is alien to God's mind because he knows of justice. To be just is to be fair and not be vengeful. Vengeful. Fairness and vengeance are impossible, for each one contradicts the other and denies that it is real. Fairness and vengeance are impossible, for each one contradicts the other and denies that it is real. It is impossible for you to share the Holy Spirit's justice with a mind that can conceive of specialness at all. Yet how could he be just if he condemns a sinner for the crimes he did not do, but thinks he did? <laughs> Remember, forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. It was a dream that we're going to wake up from. And being a dream, why would you want to condemn them for something that they didn't do, even if they think they did? That's why forgiveness or love is always justified. Yet how could he be just if he condemns a sinner for the crimes he did not do but thinks he did? And where would justice be if he demanded of the ones obsessed with the idea of punishment that they lay it aside unaided and perceive it is not true? It is extremely hard for those who still believe, in, believe sin meaningful to understand the Holy Spirit's justice Paragraph 68, let me look in the clock, In the, look at the clock. Sorry, face right up in there for you. <laughs> 68, they must believe he shares their own confusion and cannot avoid the vengeance that their own belief in justice must entail. And so they fear the Holy Spirit and perceive the wrath of God in him. They are unjust indeed to him, nor can they trust him not to strike them dead with lightning bolts torn from the fires of heaven by God's own angry hand. <laughs> they do believe that heaven is hell and are afraid of love, and deep suspicion and the chill of fear comes over them when they are told that they have never sinned. Their world depends on sin's stability, and they perceive the threat, in quotes, because God doesn't really threaten. He certainly doesn't have any fire bolts that he throws down on you because he's angry, and he doesn't ever get angry. He's our, our loving father. He's, he's another name for him is love. The opposite of love would be angry, anger. So they do believe that heaven is hell and are afraid of love and deep suspicion and the chill of fear comes over them when they are told that they have never sinned. Their world depends on st sin stability and they perceive the, in quotes, threat of what God knows as justice to be more destructive to themselves and to their world than vengeance, which they understand and love. 69. So do they think the loss of sin a curse, and flee the blessing of the Holy Spirit as if he were a messenger from hell, sent from above in treachery and guile to work God's vengeance on them in the guise of a deliverer and friend. What could he be to them except a devil dressed to deceive within an angel's cloak? And what escape? Has he for them except a door to hell that seems to look like heaven's gate? 70. Yet justice cannot punish those who ask for punishment, but have a judge who knows that they are wholly innocent in truth. In justice he is bound to set them free and give them all the honor they deserve and have denied themselves because they are not fair and cannot understand that they are innocent. Love is not understandable to sinners because they think that justice is split off from love and stands for something else. And the last paragraph we'll read today, 71. It won't finish the section, but we'll stop here. And thus is love perceived as weak and vengeance strong, for love has lost when judgment left its side and is too weak to save from punishment. But vengeance without love has gained in strength by being separate and apart from love. And what but vengeance now can help and save, while love stands feebly by with helpless hands, bereft of judgment and vitality, and powerless to save? 
What can love ask of you who think that all of this is true? Could he in justice and in love believe in your confusion? You have much to give. Could he in justice and in love believe in your confusion? You have much to give. You are not asked to trust him far, no further than what you see he offers you and what you recognize you could not give yourself. So you don't have to have a lot of uh, trust, but you got to have a little bit. It can be a feeble trust, but it'll work because you're, you're, you're leaning on the, 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 the strong hands of the Holy Spirit's support. Okay, back in our lesson. Today I will judge nothing that occurs. I will be honest with myself today. I will not think that I already know what must remain beyond my present grasp. I will not think I understand the whole from bits of my perception, which are all that I can see. Today I recognize that this is so. And so I am relieved of judgment, which I cannot make. Thus do I free myself and what I look upon to be in peace as God created us. Today I will judge nothing that occurs. In the prayer, Father, today I leave creation free to be itself. I honor all its parts in which I am included. We are one because each part contains your memory and truth must shine in all of us as one. Okay. How is our time looking? Okay, I think we have time to do our song. I don't don't ever want to take 30 minutes. Today I will judge nothing that occurs. Today I will judge nothing that occurs today I will judge nothing that occurs what is the world what is the world the world is false perception it is born of error let us not rest content let us not rest content until the world has joined our changed perception. Let us not be satisfied until forgiveness has been made complete. And let us not attempt to change our function. save the world we must save the world for we who made it must behold it through the eyes of Christ that we that what was made to die be restored to everlasting life that what was made to die be restored to everlasting life Today I will judge nothing that occurs. 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 Take that with you today and say it throughout the day. Try for every hour and give thanks to God each hour. And then have a little longer period in the morning and evening to settle in with the idea. Today I will judge nothing that occurs.